The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, that all Scripture is inspired by God. And the Greek word is theopneustos, which means God breathed. The Bible says that God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. And the Bible also says that Jesus breathed upon his apostles and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So the Bible is the breath of God. And I would, I would ask you to inhale the Word of God. I would ask you to inhale His breath. For the Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The Bible, my dear friend, is God's breath. The Bible is God's Word. Your life breath, the oxygen in your lungs, is the breath of God. And one day God will inhale your life back to Himself. God exhaled and you were born. You were conceived. And one day God will inhale you back to himself for judgment. We're just a breath. Our life is, the Bible says, like a vapor, like a breath. Our life is like a mist that appears for a little while, young lady, and then passes away. Or do you know that Jesus Christ died and rose again? Do you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead? Are you, my friends, a Christian today? The Bible says there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Only the name of Jesus Christ has the power to save from sin. The scripture declares, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. I would challenge you, my friends, to find refuge in the name of Jesus Christ. Run into the citadel of His great name. Humble yourself, the Bible says, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and He will lift you up. For God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. The Bible says that pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. My friends, are you proud today? Are you proud of perversion? We live in an age where perversion and obscenity is celebrated. In an age, we live in an age when gender dysphoria when madness is celebrated. The Bible says that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What is a sound mind, sir? A sound mind is a mind that corresponds with reality. If you're born a man, you cannot identify as a woman. That's not a mind that corresponds with reality. That's a sin against God. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness, was in her and her daughters, neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. So what was the sin of pride, sir? It was, the, the sin of Sodom was pride. What was the sin of Sodom? The first sin, according to Ezekiel, was pride. Pride goes before destruction. And what happened to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah? What happened to those cities of the plain? They were roasted. They were firebombed from heaven like a napalm strike. They were turned into a barbecue pit because of their perversion, because they celebrated obscenity. We live in an age when public obscenity is considered a human right. What do you think, my friends? Do you think that it's a sin against God? Or do you, do you walk according to the prince and power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience? My friends, except you repent, Jesus declared, you shall all likewise perish, except you repent. Everybody wants to change their gender today, but Jesus says, change your mind. You must repent, my friends. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you have a mind that corresponds with the reality? Or is your mind conformed to the fashion of this age? Are you influenced by the spirit of this age, by the zeitgeist of this present evil age? The Bible says that we ought to redeem the time for the days are evil. The days are very evil, sir. Are you right with God? Are you a child of God? Are you on speaking terms with your father? Are you on speaking terms, that is, with your creator? Maybe God is not your father. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, perhaps, your father is the devil. My friends, many religious people today imagine themselves, fancy themselves to be children of God when indeed they are children of the father of lies. The Bible says, that man-made traditions have made void the Word of God. The old King James says, you nullify the Word of God by your traditions. 
My friends, do you trust in your religion? Do you trust in your church? Do you trust in your institutional religion? Do you trust in your establishment religion to save you? The Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast, sir. The church did not die for you. Jesus Christ died for sinners. Jesus died for his church, for his kirk. Your church, your tradition, your prayers, your works cannot save you, my friends. Only Jesus Christ alone can save from sinners. He laid down his life for his people. The Bible says in Matthew 1.21, you shall call the child's name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's why Jesus was born, to save his people from their sins. Like the sin of sodomy or homosexuality, the sin of transgenderism, the sin of heterosexual pornography, adultery, fornication, the sin of drunkenness, of drug addiction. My friends, the Bible says in John 8, 44, Jesus, the Lord Jesus said this to religious people, to very religious people. You are of, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. Jesus said this to religious people who fancied themselves as children of God. He says he was a murderer, speaking of the devil, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. My friends, do you love the truth today? Do you love the Bible? The Bible built your society, sir. You know the Bible built your civilization? Don't bite the hand that feeds you. The Bible is the foundation of Western civilization. And if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? My friends, do you despise the preaching of the Bible? Does it irritate you to hear the Bible? If I was making noise with an electric guitar busking, would you give money? But for the preaching of the gospel, you only have hatred, my friends. Or, or, is the preaching of the Bible a sweet melody to your ears? Is the sound of the good news of Christ Jesus, is this a sweet melody to your ears? Are you offended by the Bible? Are you intolerant of the intolerant truth? Are you intolerant of the very Bible that built your society? My friends, I, I hope that you're a Christian today. I hope that you love the Word of God and that you appreciate the preaching of the Gospel. For the Bible declares, go into all the world and preach the Gospel to every creature. We are commanded to proclaim, to herald His Word. Why? Man does not live, sir, by bread alone. Man liveth by every word of God. We live by every word of God. The day of your death has been decreed. You don't know when you're going to die, but you know you will die. It's just a matter of time before you die. Make your peace with God today, sir. Don't take tomorrow for granted, young man. You don't know how you're going to die. You don't know when you're going to die, but you're going to die, sir. It's not a laughing matter. Your truth be the truth. Come here, let's talk. What is my truth? Do you even know? That's a presumptuous statement. Let's have an intelligent conversation. Don't run away. Don't run away with your tail between your legs. Why don't you stand and speak? Why don't you stand up like a man? Huh? Why don't you face me? Face me? See, people can't even face the preacher these days. How are you going to face God? How are you going to face God if you cannot face a little old preacher like me? If you cannot confront a man, how are you going to face God one day? The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. My friends, you are due in court. You are due for judgment. You have to stand before your Creator. Your life has been recorded. There is a permanent archive, a permanent record of all of your life's activities, all of your thoughts. Everything you've ever thought has been written down. John the Apostle said, I, and I saw a great white throne, and he who sat upon it, from whose face heaven and earth fled away, and there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades, death and hell, gave up the dead that were in them. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And every man was judged according to his works, according to what was written in the books. 
And whoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. There is a place called Gehenna. There is a place that is called the lake of fire. There is a second death. And unless you are born twice, you will die twice. Unless you are born again, you will die again. You will die in your sins. Jesus said, if you do not believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. This is not a trivial matter. This is not a trifle. This is not something to be lightly regarded. My friends, the Bible is the Word of God. And man lives by every word of God, not by bread alone. Do you love the Bible today? Do you love the Word of God? Oh, the Bible says His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Romans 8, 14. Does the sound of the Bible resonate with you? Does the preaching of the gospel resonate with you? Or do you resist him? Do you refuse him who speaks? The Bible says that you must repent. What does it mean to repent? Anybody want to tell me? What does it mean to repent, young man? Could you tell me? Repent means to change your mind, sir. To change your mind. Everybody wants to change their gender these days. Everybody's so confused and everyone's so disturbed that they don't even know who they are anymore. The Bible says, it doesn't say change your gender. It says change your mind. Unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. This is what the Word of God says, sir. And you have to face God one day. I have to face God one day. This is the gospel truth. It is appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. Death is not final, my friends. Death is not the end. You say there is no God. The Bible says there you're a fool. You're a fool if you think there is no God. The Bible says the fool hath said in his heart there is no God. Do you think you're evolved pond scum? Do you think that you are evolved stardust? Do you vainly imagine that you are evolved pond scum? No, my dear friends. You are created in the image of God. You are not evolved primates. And you will not die as a beast. Your spirit will return to God who gave it for judgment. Every one of you, my friends, has to face God one day. You are not evolved pond scum. You are not evolved stardust. You are made in God's image for God's glory. Do you know God today? Do you know who God is? You might know the exchange rate of the pound to the dollar. You might know the exchange rate of the yen to crypto. But do you know God? The Bible says, what does it profit a man, sir, if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? What is the exchange rate, sir, of your soul to this world? Your soul, my friend, your soul is worth more than this whole world. And will you sell your soul to Satan for a few more seconds of pleasure? Will you sell your soul to the devil for a few more moments of pleasure and treasure? Will you so lightly throw your soul on the trash heap? Will you so lightly disregard your own destiny? My friends, don't throw your life away. Don't sell your soul to the devil for a few more moments of pleasure and treasure. Make your peace with God today. The Bible declares today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Right now. Make your peace with God. Let's talk, my dear friend. Let's talk. I can't hear you, but you can come here. God bless you, sir. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can be saved, ma'am. My pink-haired pink -haired friend... The Lord Jesus can give you a sound mind, a mind that corresponds with the reality. We live in an age of mass delusion. What is a delusion? A delusion is a fantasy. So many people these days are addicted to fantasy fiction, fantasy movies, fantasy television, Netflix, that they're unable to discern reality anymore. They've lost the capacity to recognize reality. The love of fantasy, the love of fiction, the love of lies is so pervasive in this post-truth, post-Christian society. That's right. A post-Christian society, sir, is a post-truth. It's a post-sanity society. If you are post-Christian, you're post-sanity. You are post-truth. That is, you're insane. The Bible says, the fool, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Are you a fool today? 
who denies the obvious self-existent reality of God. The Bible says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. My friends, you have no excuse for your sin. You have no cloak for your sin. Confess your sin, my friend. The Bible says, whoever concealeth his sin shall not prosper, but whoever confesseth and forsaketh his sin shall find mercy. Repentance, God bless you, sir. Repentance consists of confession of sin and forsaking of sin. What does it mean to confess your sin, my friend? It means to acknowledge the egregiousness of your sin. It means to agree with God. To agree with God that sin is held deserving. Dishonoring your mother. Dishonoring your parents. Lying, stealing, homosexuality, heterosexual pornography, adultery, fornication. All of these sins are what bring God's wrath upon the world, young man. And the Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. Remember your creator, young man, in the days of your youth. I've got something for you to read. The Bible says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. This is for you, sir. Check it out. You know, Mark Twain said, he who does not read, he who does not read has no advantage over he who cannot read. So I would challenge you to turn off the Netflix and open the Bible. It's all right. Don't let the brain rot kill you, man. Don't let the brain rot destroy your mind. Yeah, Mark Twain wisely said, he who does not read has no advantage over he who cannot read. And there's nothing greater to read than the Bible, the greatest work of English prose in history. The Bible, my dear friends, is the word of God. We live in an age of mass delusion, young men. What is your goal? What is my goal? My goal is to preach the gospel, to tell people the good news. I'm a message, I'm a newsboy to everyone that's within audible range, everybody within an audible radius. That's my goal, sir. My goal is to, li to deliver God's word. So you should listen. You might learn something. Young man, the Bible says, man does not live by bread alone. Young men, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and you shall be saved. Don't resist him who speaks. Don't resist God. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. God gives you life and health and the power to get wealth. God has blessed you. He has lavished upon you so much kindness, which is meant to lead you to repentance. The kindness of God, the goodness of God is meant to lead you to repentance. But will you harden your heart? Will you calcify your heart? Will you galvanize your heart in rebellion against God? Or will you allow his word to pierce your heart, to probe your heart? The Bible says, for the word of God is quick, quick and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the joints and marrow and of the soul and spirit and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. See, God's word is quick, which means it's living and active. God's word exposes the ugliness of our hearts. God's word reveals the sin that only Jesus Christ can cleanse away. Only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away the filth of your browsing history. You can delete your browsing history. You can destroy your hard drive. You, my friends, you can destroy the record of your criminal behavior. But God sees your sin. God has a permanent archive. God knows your sin. Today is the day of salvation. Today. Not tomorrow, not the next day, not next week. Today is the day of salvation. Let it not be said that the harvest is over and the summer is past and you are not saved. The Bible says, yeah, yeah. Honk if, honk if you love peace and quiet. Honk if you love peace and quiet, man. All right, see that? I'm a noise disturbance. No, this is noise disturbance. I'm preaching to you the word of God. If I was blasting gangster rap music, no one would probably have an issue with me. If I was over here making noise as a busker, no one would have an issue. But I'm preaching the Bible. I'm preaching the Word of God that built your world. And yet we have so much hostility. Why? Why is there an irrational hatred for the Bible? Have you ever thought about that, sir? Why is there an, ir an irrational hatred for the preaching of the Gospel? 
Oh, my dear friends, how Babylon has fallen. Babylon the Great has fallen. But there is an elect according to the remnant of grace. My friends, if you hear his voice today, do not harden your hearts as Israel in the wilderness, but today repent. For except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. The Bible says, my dear friends, from out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, thefts, and all manner of uncleanness. Thank you, my dear friend. You know, the mind without God is a criminal mind. The mind without God is a criminal mind. The heart without Jesus is filled with criminal intent, with murderous imagination, with filthy fantasies, with violent thoughts. The mind without God is a criminal mind. My dear friend, you must be born again. You must be born again. Look at what man's imagination produces. Look at the filth all over the internet. The vast majority of internet websites are pornographic. That's the human mind. Without God, the human mind is a cesspool of filth. Without the, without the word of God, the human mind is a toilet bowl, a veritable cesspool of filth. But if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will wash you. He will clean you just like he cleansed me from my sin. He has the power to save you too, sir. I can't hear anything you're saying. But if you come close, let's talk. Let's talk. Come here. Come here. What do you want about? No. You got to come here, sir. Come now. As Moses said, who was on the Lord's side? Come to me. If you want to talk, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's play king of the hill, man. <laughs> You know, the Bible says a living dog is better than a dead lion. You know, Solomon said that. A living dog is better than a dead lion. We live in a society where many people are living like dogs and dying like dogs in the gutter. You know, men like Jimi Hendrix. You know, Jimi Hendrix drowned on his own vomit. These worldly people, they live like dogs. Isn't it such a shame? Such a shame that so many of you today are living like dogs. And I myself too was unworthy and I am unworthy of the grace of God but the Lord Jesus Christ washed me he cleansed me the Bible says sanctify them by thy truth thy word is truth sir are you in the army of God I'm not talking about any organization are you a soldier for Jesus Christ the Bible says my dear friend endure suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ the Bible says I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. See, the church of Jesus Christ, the Kirk of Jesus Christ, is on the offensive, not on the defensive. It's on the offensive. The church of God is offensive. Pun intended. Pun intended. Are you offended by the truth? Are you offended by reality? Are you offended when someone says, a man cannot identify as a woman? Are you offended when I tell you that the Bible says it is an abomination, abomination for a man to lie with a man as he does a woman? See, God says this is toheva, which is a Hebrew word that means abomination. It is hateful. It is despicable. It is reprehensible. It is egregious. It is maximally egregious for a man to lie with a man as he does a woman. And I hate to speak of the things which are done in secret publicly, but sin is all over this society. Now, I'm an American, obviously, and I'm not here as an American. I'm here as a Christian, but I'm here to tell you that Western civilization had a good run. But we have turned our back on the God of our fathers, and God's judgment is falling. The Bible says, is not my word like a fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? My God is a consuming fire. His word is like a fire. His word is not like ice cream or candy uh, or chocolate. Or Jesus never said you are the salt of the earth. He, 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 excuse me. Jesus never said you are the sugar of the earth. Jesus said you are the salt of the earth. I'm not here to make you feel good, right? If you want a judgment-free zone, join Planet Fitness. We're not here to tickle your ego. We're not here to make you feel good. We're here to tell you the hard truth. Because the hard truth is the only thing that will save you today. Some of you are lost in lies. Some of you, sadly, are lost captive by the devil to do his will. But the Lord Jesus Christ, sir, he left heaven to save his people. He left the 99 to find the one lost sheep wandering in the wilderness. And maybe that's you today. Maybe you're lost Maybe you're the least, maybe you're the last, 
That's who Jesus Christ came for, the least, the last, and the lost. Jesus Christ came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Are you too smug and postmodern and post-sanity to acknowledge that you are a sinner? Oh, does that word offend you? Are you, my friends, offended to be called a sinner? The Bible says we've all sinned, young lady. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Young man, you've sinned against God. Even if you've never committed adultery with your neighbor's wife, even if you look upon a woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her in your heart already, sir. So even if you look at pornography in God's legal code, that is tantamount to the act of adultery. What does that mean? That you, sir, have to stand before God for your rejection of his truth. You have to stand before God for your hatred of the truth. Kamala? <laughs> Whatever. Jesus is on the throne. I don't care who's behind the resolute desk. Jesus Christ is on the throne. Jesus Christ is the supreme sovereign. Whoever is the president or the king or the prime minister is immaterial. It's irrelevant. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Head of State of Head of States. You have to face Jesus one day. doesn't matter who is controlling this country or the U.S., all that matters is that you have to face God one day. And when you die, my friend, you can't bring your cell phone with you. You can't bring your life support machine with you. Okay, man? You okay? You need a doctor? Yeah, sure. I'm a doctor. You're a doctor? And what are you a doctor in? What's your uh, medical profession, sir? Can I shake your hand? I'm a doctor. I'm a human. Okay. Well, you know what? The Lord Jesus can give you a sound mind, sir. No, sir. Give me no, opinion. sir, I won't give you my Bible. You know why? Why? Because this is my Bible, and I know that your intent is not well, good. Well, kind of What's your name, sir? This is the old King James. Have you ever read the King am, James Bible? I am Sir Robert Douglas. Why are you shaking? I'm sir you okay? Are you? I'm, oh, I'm perfectly fine. Robert Can I shake your hand, sir? OBE, okay? Good to meet you. I am OBE, so if you fuck with me, you fuck with the crown. <laughs> No need to curse, man. I am the no need to curse. Britain. No, you're not. And France. You're delusional. Right, okay. Really? You're, yeah. Do you want me to call you a doctor? <laughs> God bless you. Right. I hold in my hands the King James Bible. The King James Bible, my dear friends, is the Word of God. Now, this gentleman here says he's the King of Great Britain and France. Yes, I am. Sir Robert de the Lord. Sir, with all due respect. No, you don't. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. See, we live in an age of mass delusion. We live in an age where people live in fantasy rather than reality. This is what happens when you reject the Bible. See, exhibit A, exhibit A. When you turn your back on God, when you turn your back on the Bible, we have exhibit A right here. We have mass insanity. We have people whose minds cannot correspond with reality. My friends, if you think a man can identify as a woman, you're not grounded in reality. The Bible says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So, my dear friends, look to Jesus Christ and repent of your rebellion against God. My friends, you are not a king. You are not the king. Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no king but Christ. That's what the covenanters declared. The Scottish covenanters proclaimed there is no king but Christ. Jesus Christ is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Do not challenge his sovereignty. Do not fight against God. The Bible says, shall the thing form say to him that formed it, why have you made me thus? Has not the potter the right over the clay to do what he wants with it? My friends, the Bible says, shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, why have you made me thus? See, God created you, young lady. God made you. You are not made in the image of a primate. You are not evolved pond scum. You are created in the image of God. And even though you might want to live like an animal, and therefore you attempt to justify animal behavior by saying that you evolve from an animal, well, deep down you know you're not an animal. My dear friend, you are not an animal. You are not an evolved monkey, you're not an evolved primate, you are not evolved stardust, you are made in the image of God. And that's an inconvenient truth. I get it. It's inconvenient. Our nature is rebellious. Without the gospel of Jesus Christ, my nature refuses God, resists God. But he overcame my will by his grace. He loves me and he will love you too. He, the Bible says, to as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the sons of God. So you ought to 
welcome Jesus Christ. You ought to receive him. The Bible says to as many as received him. Have you received Jesus Christ or do you reject Jesus Christ? Do you refuse him who speaks? Do you hate the sound of the preaching of the gospel? Does the Bible irritate you? Does the Christian faith offend you? Or do you think that Christianity is the product of white colonialism? My friends, I would challenge you to read a book that is the Bible. Read the Bible, my dear friends. Turn off the Netflix, turn off the TikTok, turn off the brain rot, and pick up a Bible. Pick up the Word of God. You know why people don't want to open the Bible? Because the Bible opens us. This is why we don't open the Bible. The Bible opens us. His Word is quick and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 17, that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Is not my word like a fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Jeremiah 23, verse 29. God's Word, my dear friends, yeah, it will humble. It will break your ego. It will kill your ego. But then it will revive your ego. It will save you. It will give you a new life. It will make you a new man. If any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And God commanded the light to shine out of darkness into our hearts. See, God said, let there be light into my heart. God said, let there be light. And there was light, young man. And he can give you his light too, sir. Look to Jesus, sir. Look to him. Everyone's going to die one day. It's, it's inevitable. It's inescapable. You must die, my friends. You're not going to be able to upload your consciousness into a supercomputer. You're not going to be a transhuman. Death comes for everyone. Death is indiscriminate. You know that? Death is indiscriminate. Death comes for the rich and the poor, the high-born, the low-born. Death is hunting you, my friends. Death is stalking you. And if you were wise, you would prepare to meet thy God. You would prepare to meet thy God by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, there is no other name given under heaven among men, whereby you must be saved. The Bible says that Jesus declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. Jesus Christ is the gatekeeper. Jesus Christ is the only access point. He is the only portal to God's glory. Jesus Christ, my dear friends, is the door of the sheep. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. Why? He lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus Christ showed us what real love is. And what is love? People say love is love, and they don't even know what they're talking about. That's called tautology. That's nonsense. Love is love is tautology. No, my dear friends, the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 13, greater love has no man than this. The Bible says in John 15, 13, greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. What is love, sir? Love is not lust. Love is not pornography. That's not love. Love is not treating a woman like a piece of meat. Love, my dear friends, is self-sacrifice. Love is selfless, sir. Young man, love is not selfish. Love is not egocentric. Love, my dear friends, sacrifices itself for the object of its love. And that's what Jesus taught us. Jesus said, greater love hath no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did. He laid down his life. The Bible says that no man took Jesus' life from him, but he laid it down of his own accord. This command he received from his father. Jesus Christ, oh, he loves his church so much that he gave his life. Are you a member of his kirk? Are you a member of his body? Or are you an enemy of God? Raise your children in the fear of God, sir. Raise your children in the fear of God. Young man, please, sir, remember your creator in the days of your youth. You're a father. What a great responsibility, young man. What a great privilege. God has blessed you. Dedicate your child to the service of God. Dedicate your child to honor your Creator. Because you're going to face Him one day. Every one of us must give an account to God, the Bible says. It is appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. See, death is coming. Death is coming for everyone. It's just a matter of time. Today is the day of salvation. Don't delay. Don't delay. 
Don't take tomorrow for granted. Don't be presumptuous. You do not know what a day may bring forth, the Bible says. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know what today holds. We do not know what a day holds, but we know who holds the day. And Jesus Christ holds the day. The Bible says that wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whoever and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Are you deceived by strong drink? Do you love to get drunk? Do you love to get smashed? <laughs> Do you love to get trashed? My dear friends, wine mocks you if that is you. Wine is a mocker. Don't be deceived by the lust of your flesh. Don't try to escape responsibility, escape reality with an, a, a toxicant, with a poison. The Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wherein is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you enjoy being filled with wine and spirits or filled with the Holy Spirit? My friends, the Bible says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says all Scripture is inspired or breathed out by God. See, the Holy Spirit moved holy men to give us the books of the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, written by 40 different authors over 4,400 years. The Bible is the most internally consistent, verifiably impeccable document in antiquity. From antiquity, this book is self-referential. The Bible is self-aware. The Bible is alive. The Bible is more alive than you or I. See, the Bible is at least 4,400 years old. Our names will be forgotten. My name will be forgotten. But the Bible has endured. The Bible has lasted through millennia, thousands of years. The Bible. What's that, sir? Can't you say anything incoherent or intelligible? You sound like Kamala Harris, man. Why can't you say something coherent? Cussing is not conducive to civil discussion. What's your name, sir? Hello. Let Hello. me get into this microphone. No, you can't get onto the microphone. Okay. Don't touch me again. Okay, I'll get off my ladder. Yes, please do. All right, I'm gonna so, de-escalate. De-escalate mode. If God wants That's a cute you to dog. Be touch him, hey, buddy. You will not. Be... All right. If uh, oh. wouldn't God want you to be doing Tough this under the power of your own voice instead of annoying the fuck out of everyone in the circle? Well, no one. There's children around. No need to cuss. Man. Okay. If you're gonna cuss, I'm not gonna talk to fuck you. Fuck off and die. Well, I hope that you would live. Okay. See, he wants us to die. What's in the heart proceedeth out the mouth. So you want me to die. So, you have just testified against yourself that you are a murderer at heart. And you know what? I'm not better than you. I'm not here telling you I'm morally superior or I'm somehow better than you. I'm just your brother. I am one of, we're all one of you. Even though we are Christians, even though we have been born of the Spirit, we have the same propensity for evil. The Lord Jesus Christ has redeemed us from that proclivity towards depravity, from that turpitude. The Lord Jesus has saved us and called us with a holy calling. My friends, there's so much hatred today. See the hate preaching? How many hate preachers are there today? We just, we were just victimized by a hate preacher. That was a hate crime, sir. A hate crime. People hate the sound of the gospel. Have you ever read the Bible, my dear friend? The Bible will read you. That's why we don't open the Bible, because the Bible opens us. His word is sharper than any two-edged sword. His word probes into the darkness. Even the darkness is as light before him, and the night is as the day. You cannot hide your sin from God any longer. You can't hide your sin. The Bible says, whoever concealeth his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesseth and forsaketh his sin shall find mercy and if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness the blood of Jesus cleanseth away all sin if you would but repent today if you would call upon the Lord Jesus Christ God be merciful to me a sinner you would go to your house justified you would go to your house right with God are you a Christian my dear friend are you right with God you know, you're going to die one day. That's not a threat. That's a promise. Everyone dies. It is appointed unto men once to die, the scripture declares, and then the judgment. You are not evolved pond scum. When you die, you don't merely go to the dirt. Your body returns to the dust from whence you came, and your spirit will return to God who gave it for judgment. For judgment. However, I have good news. The cord of heaven is generous and offers pro bono defense. Jesus Christ is a solicitor. 
These things are written that you may not sin. Little children, little children, these things are written that you may not sin, the scripture says. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. The Lord Jesus Christ, one drop of his blood can forgive all the sin of all human history. If you would but humble yourself today, my dear friend, under his mighty hand, he will lift you up. He will exalt you, my dear friend. You don't know when you're going to die. Please wear a helmet, sir, because we don't know when we're going to die, right? You got to be safe because we are mortal. We're mortal. Death is coming for every one of us. Whether you could be the strongest man, you could be the wealthiest man, you could be the most fit, you could be a CrossFit champion, but death will come for you nonetheless. But are you prepared to meet your God? Are you right with God? You have disobeyed your mommy and daddy. You have dishonored your parents. We have all broken God's law. The Bible says even if you keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, you are guilty of all, James 2.10. So the Word of God declares that His law is like a chain. If you break one link, you break the whole chain. So you may have never murdered, but if you commit adultery, you're still a lawbreaker. We are all guilty. I myself am guilty. I'm, again, we do not preach ourselves. I'm not here blowing my own horn. We're here blowing His shofar. We are declaring that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. We are not here to proclaim ourselves, but we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and we are your servants for Jesus' sake, Paul said. We're not here today trying to tell you to follow our example perfectly. Follow us as we follow Christ. See, Jesus Christ, He alone is the Good Shepherd because he lays down his life for the sheep. Are you a member of his flock? Are you in his fold today? Does he lead you beside the still waters? Does he restore your soul? The Lord Jesus. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What are you lacking today? What are you looking to to fulfill that desire? Are you looking to the bottle to give you peace? Are you looking to a narcotic to give you tranquility? Are you looking to the arms of a woman or a man to give you peace. My dear friends, the Bible says, he who loves silver, he who loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. But Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Keep yourself free from the love of money and be content with such things as you have, for he saith, I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, if you are one of God's sons today, if you are a child of God, you might have no money. You might have no one in this world that loves you. You might have no living relatives. But if you have Jesus Christ and he has you, you are the richest person. You are the wealthiest person. The Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Submit to his sovereignty. Obey his government. The Bible says if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you, sir, you're on camera, shall be saved. I don't want you, sir, who's on camera, to die without Jesus. My friends, you're on candid camera. Candid camera. You know, Eric Snowden. Remember Eric I'm Snowden? You know, can you tell me who's Eric Snowden? Do you know who's Eric Snowden? No. Eric Snowden showed us that nothing is hidden, that everything is being recorded. Eric Snowden was a CIA analyst who revealed that intelligence from the U.S. and other countries that was divulging Snowden. was divulging was people's Edward personal communications. That was Edward Eric Snowden. Was Edward you're talking about like Julian Assange, yeah? No, Julian Assange. About Edward Snowden, you dumb fuck. No, it's Eric. Google it. You got to drink more coffee, man. It's Eric Snowden. You need more coffee, Nero, man. Cafe Nero. You know? Do you know who Nero was, young man? Yes, he was a Roman emperor. And what did he do? He killed a lot of people. He killed, and he killed Paul, according to history, and Peter. Do you know what, sir? Was that because they wouldn't shut the fuck up? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. yeah, you you passed the test, yeah. man. <laughs> My friends, and we're not going to be yeah. quiet either, sir. Do you know why? We care for you. The Bible says that we are commanded, sir. We are commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel. What's this for? This is for you and other people to hear. I mean, I'm pretty sure they could just hear you if you talk. You can all hear me, right? Right, right. So what's your name, sir? Yeah. What's your name? You can all hear me, right? 
Okay. They can hear me. I, know. I don't think you need me. I'm not as strong as you. I don't have as good of a voice as you. What's this guy's name? Is Just, it? Oh, you're right. Oh, you're right. It's Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden. Oh, you're right. Well, well hey, you don't know what the fuck you're jet lag about. is my <laughs> excuse. Okay. <laughs> it was Edward Snowden. Okay. This Correction. Corrigendum. It was... My friends, you know what Edward Snowden taught us? That everything is being recorded. And the Bible taught us this thousands of years ago. The Bible says, and I saw a great white throne, and he who sat upon it, from whose face heaven and earth fled away, and there was found no more place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Sir, I know, I know. You know why? Because we get a lot of hatred. There's a lot of hate preachers today, sir. You're hate preaching on the street. Respectfully, respectfully, sir. If I was over here selling something, if I was over here preaching Islam or preaching a different religion, we would be tolerant. We would be celebrated as for diversity, equality, and inclusion. But we're are preaching the gospel of Jesus, and we encounter resistance. Why? Just the gospel, sir. The gospel that Christ died according to the scriptures, that he was buried okay. according to the scriptures, and that he was raised on the third. Do you believe this, sir? I believe that Are you a Christian, sir? Touch children in your spirit. I am. That's what I believe. Yeah. <laughs> well, the devil is called a slanderer. The Greek word for devil, diabolos, means someone who slanders, who falsely accuses, sir. So, hey, you know, you have a good day, sir. No hard feelings. I appreciate you, you talking with me. A lot of people don't have the courage to come up and talk to the preacher. I appreciate you, sir. And we, we, we got a, a free book for you to read. <clears throat> you know, Mark Twain said, He who does not read has no advantage over he who cannot read. Have you ever read the Bible? I would challenge you, my dear friends, to open the Bible and allow the Bible to open you. Open the Word of God and allow the Word of God to reveal your need for Jesus Christ. Allow the Word of God to show that you need to be saved from yourself. You don't need to be saved from the devil. You don't need to be saved from coronavirus. You don't need to be saved from China or Russia. You need to be saved from yourself, from yourself. Every man is his own enemy, my friends. The Bible says, the soul that sins, it shall die. The soul that sins, it shall die. Sin is self-destructive behavior. Sin is a slow suicide. That drunken habit is a slow suicide. That pornography addiction is a slow suicide. That love of money, that love of pleasure, that love of treasure is a slow killing of yourself. My friends, the Bible says, he who committeth sin is a servant of sin. You don't have to be a slave to sin any longer. You don't have to be a slave to the bottle anymore. You don't have to be a slave to drugs anymore. You don't have to be a servant to your lusts anymore. Do not love the world, the Bible says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, they are not of the Father, they are of this world and this world passes away and the lust thereof but whoever does the will of God abides forever the lust of your flesh young man it's powerful it's strong but you've got to repent of indulging it you've got to repent of gratifying the baser impulses of the flesh without restraint God my friends created man in his image that man would seek him that man would search for him we have sought out many inventions, right? We're so distracted by these fancy toys, right? By life support machines. That's what I call a cell phone, you know? A, a cell phone is a life support machine. For so many people, they can't live without their cell phone. They don't know where their wife is. They don't know, well, where's my phone? Where's my phone? They, all they care about today is a screen, a screen time. Are you addicted to a screen, sir? Are you addicted to a programming of your brain by the media? My dear friends, are you addicted to mass media? I want you to think clearly for me. Think clearly. I want you to open the Bible. The Bible will open your mind. The Bible will open your heart and reveal your need for Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 10, verse 34, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. His word is sharper than any claymore. His word is more powerful than any war hammer. His word is sharper. Living and active, quick and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You can hide your dark fantasies from your wife. You can hide your sinful fantasy from your mother. But God sees your sin, young man. Young lady, God sees your sin. Please, with all due respect, I would challenge you to open the Bible. And let the Bible open you. Let the Bible show you you need Jesus today. You need Christ Jesus. The Bible says man does not live by bread alone, young man, but by every word of God. 
And the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, Jesus Christ is the Word incarnate. He is the Word of God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. And we beheld His glory. Jesus once told a woman named Martha, If you believe, you will see the glory of God. See, the Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But if you believe, you shall see the glory of God. My dear friends, death is inevitable. Everybody must return to the dust, for from the dust we came, and unto the dust shall we return. But your spirit will return to God who gave it for judgment. You're due in court, my dear friend. You are due in court, and you need a solicitor. The Bible says that we have an advocate with the Father. We have a public solicitor, a pro bono defense. Jesus Christ is our defense. The name of the Lord Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The Bible says, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. These things are written, little children, John says, these things are written that you may have eternal life. That you may know that you have eternal life. Little children, these things are written that you may not sin. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ was tempted, my dear friend, as we are tempted. In every point, Jesus was tested by the devil himself. Satan, the evil one, personally accosted Jesus in the desert for 40 days. And Jesus Christ conquered the tempter. Jesus Christ overcame the seductions of the serpent, the most subtle beast of the field. My dear friends, the Lord Jesus Christ, he died and he rose from the dead so that we need not fear death or fear any evil thing. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Do you despise the preaching of the Bible? Do you despise the preaching of the Word of God? The Bible says the time is coming when men will not endure sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will heap up to themselves teachers suited to their own lusts. Many preachers today are false shepherds, and they tell you, you can have your best life now, like Joel Osteen, a false teacher from America, from my country. Sorry that it was exported here. But my dear friends, a false shepherd tells you, you can have your best life now. A false teacher tells you that Jesus came to give you prosperity, health, and wealth. A false teacher turns a church service into a man-centered cult. Do you worship God, my dear friends, or do you worship yourself? Do you love money? Do you love pleasure rather than loving God? Please, my dear friends, repent today. The Bible says, unless a man repent, the Lord will wet his sword. God will draw his sword. He will cut you down one day. Today is the day of salvation. Today, now is the acceptable time. Don't delay. Don't put it off. Make your peace with God today. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as Israel in the wilderness. For 40 years, that generation wandered. That generation was killed because they complained against God. Do you hate the Word of God? Do you despise the preaching of the Bible? The problem is not the volume. The problem is the content. God doesn't need PR publicity helpers. He doesn't need people to run public relations for Him. He doesn't need people to monitor and to moderate the preacher. No, my dear friends. He needs you to repent. He needs us to repent. And we're here today to tell you that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You can take that to the bank. You can't trust politicians, right? You cannot trust prime ministers or presidents, but you can put your trust in God. Why? The Bible says, in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie promised before the world began. Titus chapter 1 verse 2, Google it. All right, Google it, my friends. I challenge you to search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Be a Berean, sir, who opens the Bible. Have you ever opened the Bible, young man, with the black hat? Have you ever opened the Bible? Please, sir, please open the Bible. The Bible is God's word. The Bible is the instruction manual for life. The Bible. Oh, you know what Bible stands for? <laughs> Basic instructions before life ends. Basic instructions before leaving earth, because we're all going to die one day. Yes, ma'am, how can I help you? I like your earrings. 
Right. Good question, young lady. The Bible was written by 40 different authors who were moved or inspired, we say, by the Holy Spirit. Did you thank God for your coffee there? Um, no, I'm... Are you a Satanist? No, I'm not a Oh, okay, because I thought the penny was... <laughs> it's a common misconception. I okay. The old Greek gods? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> the old Greek gods didn't work for them, did they? No. What happened to the Greek Empire? What happened to Greece? It's nothing today. The Greek gods couldn't even save their country, ma'am. No, but look at what's happening to our country, the entire world. Because good, good point. Good point. But haven't haven't we turned our back on the Bible? Haven't our I'm an American. Ha, haven't has not Western lands turned their back on God? So what do we expect? Do we expect God to prosper us if we turn our back on Him? But do you know also, for example, you are American. I assume we do know of Trump. He uses the Bible quite, I would say, very badly. Um, but it's just, for example, people use the Bible for outrageous things like the Bible on the autonomy for women. Right. Uh, putting a lot of people at risk. Um, he took, well, I don't know exactly if he did take. I'm not very clear up on it at the moment. Right, so yes, people abuse the Bible to justify their own sin. That's the truth. That's not because of the Bible, but in spite of the Bible. People will use the Bible as a pretext. A wise man once said, a text without context is a pretext for a subtext. <laughs> Basically, what that means is people misinterpret the Bible to justify their own evil intentions. So, whether it be slavery or whether it be colonization, whatever you think is a social ill, people may have used, people did use texts of Scripture out of context to justify their sinful behavior. And so, it is important that we read the entire Word of God and submit to the whole counts of God. Please, young lady, do you own a Bible at home? Um, I do, yes. Okay, please read it cover to cover, ma'am. Well, please, I, I hear you, and people misinterpret the scriptures. That's why it is important that we are members of a church, of a local church, and that we're under qualified leadership. But you can open the Bible for yourself, and you can study it for yourself, and you can pray. And I would challenge all of you who are here to pray and ask God to reveal His truth to you, to open the Bible prayerfully and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me, because you have a creator. We all have a creator. Right? Just like your cell phone has an intelligent designer. If I told you that this phone was the product of random chance, you'd say that's absurd. How can you think, dear ma'am, your brain is more complex, your brain is more advanced than the CPU in a supercomputer. Your DNA code is more advanced and more complex than the source code of PHP or JavaScript. You, dear ma'am, are the crown of God's creation. Every one of us is made in the image of God. I'm going to say this wonderful speech that was actually very enlightening. Um, but I, Thank you. Again, I would again slightly disagree. I understand phones are made from obviously like a higher intelligent creature. But I... Well, okay, so you said higher intelligent creature. But ma'am, God is the creator. And as, as an infinite person, as an infinite deity, he has no beginning. Uh -huh. He has no creator. He is the creator. And that's not silly. That's a very intelligent question. I appreciate you. I appreciate your rational feedback because we have a lot of people just, you know, shouting curses. And I appreciate the fact that, right? And, and, and that you have. And that, yeah, thank you for um, responding. You know, talking because we're not here to um, force anyone to believe anything. So um, many people think that God was created by man. It's called idolatry. People make gods, right? They make images after their own likeness or the likeness of animals, but. God, by definition, ma'am, is infinite. And as infinite, he has no beginning or end. He's eternal. Just like in, in mathematics, right? There is a concept of infinity. And God is infinite. By definition, he is an infinite intelligence. I, I, it's hard for my three-pound brain, our three-pound brains to process this because it is transcendent. He is transcendent. He defies human language. He defies human understanding. He's God. He is God. And we... And these are good questions, and we should ask these type of questions. 
And we should ask them reverently because God hears and sees all, ma'am. And one day we have to go back to God. One day we're due to face God for our life. Well, it's interesting you would mention, okay, what do I think about, <clears throat> like, the Egyptian god Ra? Well, well, no, they are liars. So, um, those false gods are liars. They're evil spirits that masquerade. They pretend to be benevolent deities, but they're actually evil spirits. So, all of the gods of the nations, all of the gods of the Egyptians or the Greeks, those gods are evil spirits pretending to be gods, pretending to be benevolent, but they're actually malevolent. Ma'am, those spirits want to destroy you. They do not want to help you. They want to drag you to hell, ma'am. Evil spirits that masquerade as ancient gods are actually demons. The Bible says that the things which the Gentiles offer to idols, they offer to devils and not to God. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20. Do you, you own a Bible? Ma'am, those ancient gods are long dead. I was in Egypt last, I don't know, last year. I was in Egypt. I saw the, the Sphinx and the, the uh, pyramids. Those gods are long dead. Egypt is a Muslim country now. Those gods are long dead because they were never alive. They were never alive. The, 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 the ancient Greek gods, they couldn't help Greece. Well, I, well from, from my readings, I know you might read differently, interpretation again, but they believed that the gods were not to be loved and, and praised. They were to be avoided. They, they were, were to be feared. feared. Do you know why they were to be only feared and not loved? Because they were tyrants. Because those gods, young lady, ma'am, those gods, the false gods, the idols of the nations are actually evil spirits that are tyrants. They are cruel, malevolent, evil, malicious spirits that are intent and bent upon destroying humans made in the image of the true God. They are vengeful spirits. You don't want to worship them. You don't want to pray or meddle with them because they will destroy you. They'll send you to hell where they're destined to go. Ma'am, you don't want to mingle with them. I would challenge you all, my friends, to pick up the Bible right? Put down the tarot cards and the Ouija board or whatever kids are doing these days and open the Bible. The Bible built your society, folks. The Bible built your world, sir. You know that? Don't look at me, man. I'm fucking mental. I think you want to be looked at with those pants on. <laughs> cool. I like your style, man. <laughs> I think he's cool. He's like, don't look at me, but I like his pants are like, look at me. <laughs> Ma'am, seriously. Uh, the Bible is God's word, and I would challenge you to open the Bible, please, and, and, and prayerfully seek the true God who made the heavens and the earth, not a God made by human hands, a God that made us by his word.